I'm the engineering officer aboard HMCS Toronto and I work within the Marine Systems Engineering Department. Aboard Toronto there's two engineering departments, the Marine Systems Engineering Department and the Combat Systems Engineering Department. And we often say that the ship has three functions. It has to float, move and fight. So our department is responsible for the float and the move aspects of that. So our department maintains the propulsion system on board, the power generation, the ship's structural integrity, fresh water production, and all the hotel services, as we say, for all of the ship's company. So we have uh, two reverse osmosis desalination plants on board ship. So those are plants that take salt water in and push them through a series of filters using very high pressure. And through that, that's, that filter system, it's able to separate the salt and other minerals out of the salt water to produce fresh water on board. And that's used for a ship's company's consumption, bathing, and any other fresh water requirement on board. The only other thing that we can do is if we're at sea with a replenishment ships, those ships often carry excess water and we can transfer that water from one ship to another during a replenishment at sea. So aboard Toronto, we have three propulsion engines, two gas turbines and one diesel engine. So the two gas turbines are what we consider our main engines and they're used for high speed and maneuvering whereas the one diesel engine is considered a cruise engine. So we'll use that for our normal transits when we want to uh, conserve our fuel consumption and uh, we're just moving around doing a normal patrol. So we'll use the gas turbines whenever the ship is brought to action stations, which is when we're actually doing some war fighting, or if we're transiting into a harbor where we might need to make some quick propulsion movements or some tight maneuvering. So we have approximately 50 personnel in the engineering department. Uh, these guys are highly trained technicians and they get a variety of training throughout their career. So they'll get training specifically on diesel engines, on the gas turbines, they learn about all the pump systems, piping arrangements throughout the ship. Uh, some of them get specific training in welding and other metal repair. Uh, and additionally, our department is responsible for the damage control aspects of the ship. So if we were ever to have a fire or a flood on board, our teams will go out and combat that fire or that flood and they have specific training in those aspects as well. And it's necessary as uh, the ships get older and there's uh, less and less spare parts available to us, we need those personnel available to make repairs and keep the ship running as well as it has been during this deployment. So we have uh, three main shops within our department. We have an electrical shop, a mechanical shop and a uh, shipwright shop, which is mainly metal repair, uh, woodworking, and whatnot. So within those three shops, our technicians are able to conduct repairs or refurbishment of some of our components when they become worn out or need uh, replacement of consumable materials like a gasket or an O-ring, for example. Uh, so they can do quite a lot within those shops and they also have uh, some machinists within the department that can fabricate new components when we have broken something. Uh, however, sometimes we'll have a catastrophic failure of a piece of equipment which we can't predict and that would require a total replacement of that one piece of equipment of which we generally will have onboard stores for but the larger pieces will have to have shipped in to our next port of call and then our technicians are able to move that piece of equipment down and do an installation and then test it out to ensure that it functions the way it's supposed to. So the complexity of uh, this ship compared to uh, a civilian ship, uh, the technology is more or less the same. In, in some cases, it is a little more robust. Uh, 
will have a lot of vibration dampening built into our equipment because it is a warship. It is expected to take some damage if we were to take it into a war-like scenario. Uh, so we'll have a lot of uh, survivability built into our equipment that a normal civilian ship might not necessarily have. And then we also have a little bit more redundancy as well because of that, the same reason. If we were to take damage in one portion of the ship, then we would have a backup to that piece of equipment somewhere else in the ship that's not damaged so that we can keep on fighting. Uh, but the, uh, the technology on the marine systems engineering side of the house, it, it's not drastically different from that of a civilian ship. Um, but it, it is a complex machine because there is so much equipment, it is distributed throughout the ship and again as we require 50 people to uh, conduct the maintenance and operation of that equipment, it, it is a lot to coordinate 24 hours a day, 7 days a week as we sail. Yeah, and I would say on the uh, combat systems engineering side of the house, with all of their equipment for weapons, sensors, communications, that is much more complex than a, a civilian ship would be. And a lot of the real estate on the ship is taken up by that equipment. So you will see a lot more of our systems, not so much out in the open, but more visible than you would on a civilian ship, uh, because we use every square inch of a ship that we can for our equipment. And the, the two engineering departments do work very closely together because we do rely on each other for certain things to make the ship function as a whole. So for example, the radars and the communication systems, they're not going to function without electrical power. So I have to ensure through my department that we're producing adequate power to the standard that's necessary for their equipment to run properly or to provide cooling to some of their systems that require that. And uh, it's a close liaison between the two engineering officers and their departments to to make sure that these functions are always met to make the overall goal of the ship's mission uh, come to fruition.